I just got to get out to the Middle East now to our correspondent there, Leland Vitter, uh, where you may be aware that Iran has been conducting some war games in the Straits of Hormuz, uh, which are a critical waterway through which something like a fifth or a sixth of the world's entire oil uh, supplies pass. And Iran is now threatening uh, U.S. warships, as I understand it, Leland. Tell us about that. How serious is this? Well, I think you should start with this, Jonathan. The Iranian naval chief said, we're not interested in warning the Americans more than once, and they should not bring their aircraft carriers back through the Straits of Hormuz to the Persian Gulf. The U.S. response could probably be summed up in basically saying, so what? They said, we're going to put our aircraft carriers and our naval ships through the Straits of Hormuz when we want, <laughs> for whatever reason we want, as many times as we want. And uh, the naval drill that the Iranians had been practicing for the past 10 days was heavy on the smoke and fire and a whole lot of threats, but didn't have anywhere near the kind of military hardware that experts say the Iranian Navy needs in order to actually follow through on their threat to shut down the Straits of Hormuz, which, as you mentioned, carries about a sixth of the world's oil supply through it. And the Iranians are threatening to shut it down if the world proceeds with more aggressive sanctions against their nuclear program. So this is the threat. If you try to cut off our money coming into Iran and go ahead and hurt our nuclear program, we're going to shut down the Straits of Hormuz. The video, though, doesn't show much. The one thing it did show was them using a surface-to-surface -surface missile, which could be used against an anti-ship scenario, for example, against an oil super tanker, which would certainly cause a huge reverberation in the oil markets if they did that. However, there's a lot of history of the U.S. military being in the Persian Gulf and U.S. aircraft carriers being in the Persian Gulf. They are among the most formidable weapons in the world known to man and able to project force tens of thousands of miles away from their home base using their carrier-based aircraft. And back in the 1980s, they were used actually to escort Kuwaiti flagged oil vessels through the Straits of Hormuz when Iran and Iraq were at war. And back in the 1980s, the U.S. and Iran actually had a naval battle in the Straits of Hormuz over just this issue when the Iranians had mined an area that hit a U.S. missile frigate. What happened in that battle? The Iranians lost badly. So you can draw from this a couple of things. Number one, the Iranians have a lot of bravado. Number two, that the U.S. military thinks the Straits of Hormuz is something worth fighting for and have essentially said we are going to continue putting our ships there. And number three, despite the Iranians' bravado and all of their videos that they put out, it's more than likely that in the future that uh, the U.S. would probably have a little bit more than a light workout dispatching with the weapons and the tactics we saw in those Iranian videos. Jonathan? Now, have we heard specifically from any U.S. officials responding to this threat, Leland? Exactly, we have. From the Pentagon spokespeople and also from the Secretary of Defense's spokespeople who have said, we will send our carriers through the Straits of Hormuz our battle plans and our movements of our ships are unchanged and the Straits of Hormuz have international agreements governing them that allow us to navigate warships through them essentially at the discretion of the United States Navy and there's no intention of changing that. All right, Leland Vitted in uh, Jerusalem, thank you very much. I just want to get